A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then also an heir through God. The Word of the Lord. Our second reading for this Sunday comes from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. When we were reflecting on the first reading from the book of Numbers, we dwelt on blessings, the blessings of God, and how life is changed because God enters the picture to be the source of blessings. And the last blessing mentioned there was peace. For the Israelites, peace was not just the absence of conflict or battles or war. Peace is the symbol of fullness of life. When God's peace comes to you, you are fully alive. Now the second reading talks about the fullness of time, the designated time. Time, history, reached its fullness when the greatest blessing was sent by God. And what was that greatest blessing? Oh, let me correct myself. I think the question should be, who is the greatest blessing? Jesus, the very Son of God, the very presence of God coming to us as a human being born of a woman, the greatest blessing that has ever come to the world is not a thing, but the very person of God in human flesh, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus, God who saves. And this happened when this Word of God became flesh through a woman whose feast we celebrate today, Mary the mother of God, for the child that she bore in her womb is truly God, truly the Son of God. Now, some people might think, okay, Jesus is born, okay, we celebrate Christmas. Oh, what is, what is the blessing there? I did not get anything from my Ninong or Ninang. <laughs> Jesus was born, but my Ninong and Ninang disappeared so, so what blessing are you talking about, Bishop? Every year we celebrate, celebrate the birth of Christ, Christmas. Huh, last year, I was a tricycle driver. This year, I am still a tricycle driver. Oh, what type of blessing does the birth of Christ uh, through Mary bring to us? Oh, we are consoled by the words of St. Paul in the second reading. The birth of Jesus in itself is already a blessing. God enters our lives. But the effects are also blessings. One effect is that in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we also are given the grace to be adopted children of God. My brothers and sisters, let us ponder that we become adopted children of God, meaning in Jesus Christ, we are now able to share in the very life of God, divine life. It is not just merely human life that we possess now. In Jesus, we can share in divine life, in the very life of God. Wow! And this is because of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, poured into our hearts. Because of Jesus, the Holy Spirit has become part of us and the Spirit will enable us to say, Abba, Father. The Holy Spirit will make us true children 
of the Father, just like Jesus Christ. Wow! Now, if you're not content with that, St. Paul says, Because you are now adopted children, you are free. You are not anymore a slave. In the household of God, you are not a servant, a slave, but a son or a daughter of God. Now imagine that blessing, freedom that comes from God. And finally, because you are an adopted child, you are not anymore a slave, you are now an heir of God. All the good things that God wants us to inherit, you are entitled to that. This is the blessing that Jesus brings. In the fullness of time, the fullness of love happens. The fullness of blessings also happens. And we benefit from that. We are now adopted children, heirs to the inheritance of the Father. And we exhibit the freedom of the children of God, being able to cry out, Abba, Father. I ask you, my dear brothers and sisters, do you appreciate this blessing from Jesus Christ?